quite easily the biggest haul that I've shown off since the start of the playthrough. Uh, we've actually managed to fill the entirety of the box. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, show off the uh, locations that these are all at, add any notes that uh, are relevant to like where I may have, where in particular I may have found them. Um, most of these are just Route 211, Mount Coronet as well. This is the uh, first area, the one that connects the two halves of Route 211. This one is particular, is specific to the east. Um, these two as well, these are in a honey tree that's in the east section of Route 211. Um, this is on the northern um, section heading up towards Route 216. This is in the water. These are just sort of encountered by walking around and then Route 216 stuff just sort of around the place. This is the poker radar exclusive to Route 216. This is the radar exclusive to Route 211. You can find it on both sides. I actually picked up a total of four since you can't find the Hitmons in the wild at all and they're not handed out to you as a gift. I had to evolve all of them so that's uh, those three out of the way. Oh, I forgot these four. Uh, yeah, this is fished up using the old rod. Uh, nighttime exclusive, nighttime exclusive, nighttime exclusive. That's the southern part of Route 205. And so I believe that's about it. So my main goal for this segment, which was supposed to upload up yesterday, but I didn't for reasons. House is a bit too rowdy. It's going to be a bit of a thing for the next two weeks. I think I've gone on enough of a tangent about school holidays as it is. Um, but my main, main goal here is to knock over the second gym. Before I do that though, I want to talk to this NPC because she will give you a bunch of fossils. So you don't actually have to go down to the underground to grab any of these fossils. And you get three of each with the exception of the old amber, which you only get one of because you don't need to evolve anything. Um, it's interesting to note though that you get three of each of these other fossils just because it's like if you want to have a full living dex, you can commit two of them to the living dex and the third one to your body. So in that regard, you probably should have maybe been handed two old ambers. Um, but it's nothing that you can't really sort out by breeding or just going down to the underground and grabbing another old amber. Not that I've been able to find one down there so far, but it is possible to find them down there. Um... Last thing I want to do before I go into the gym is I'm going to grab myself some healing items. This is about as far as I've gotten in previous attempts at this segment just because, you know, trying to take advantage of the quiet moments in the house for today, trying to, in getting this uh, segment out the way. So far it's been pretty peaceful, so let's hope that that uh, peace lasts for at least another 20 minutes. I imagine I'll probably be around about 20 or 25 minutes in here. It might actually put me off of doing the galactic uh, building up the north afterwards, but um, we'll see how this goes down. I guess I should also show off the uh, new move sets for my Pokemon, which I've grinded up. Uh, Spearmint, I believe, only got Ice Shard. I got rid of Swagger for it, since I don't see myself using Swagger. Um, similar sort of thing with $3. I got Gyro Ball on it in place of Confuse Ray. I also gave a Faint Attack and over the top of Psy Wave because seriously nobody should be using Psy Wave. It's holding lefties. I forgot to mention that I got the lefties from the Munchlax that I picked up from the Valley Windworks, that uh, honey tree down there. So that's useful. This is probably going to be the tankiest thing on my team for a while. So leftovers fits it most there. I'm not too sure if there's anything I can really give to Spearmint except maybe... Actually, I got that Never Melt Ice, don't I? Do I still have that? Yeah, I might as well give that to it. Never Melt Ice will be pretty handy here against Pokemon that are weak to ice just helps to knock them out a bit quicker. Um, okay. She, she she must she must be very very short-sighted because she didn't call out to me to engage in a battle instead she, I have to interact with her. And the very first Pokemon that I encounter is not actually weak to ice. Just my luck isn't it? Okay. Uh, not that Lotad's actually going to do a whole lot to me anyway, because... Yeah. Um, what do we want to do here? I guess just keep spamming Ice Shard. Damn it, Stun Spore. I don't think I have any Paralyze heals on me, so I might have to go back and buy a couple of those. Switch into Rampart. What? I switched into Rampart under the impression that this thing was going to be part bug. I don't know what made me think that it was going to be part bug. Probably because I thought it was Paris. I've got no idea. Let me just smash this thing with a takedown. No, no, never mind. We are just going to switch out instead. 
didn't think it would take that long for things to start going south and uh oh geez really i i gyro ball's supposed to be pretty that that's the stupid thing about gyro ball you're supposed to be more powerful the slower you are and yet it's almost never actually powerful in the absolute slightest so i'm not even too sure why i invested in in putting it on the set okay spearmint's paralyzed might as well go into spearmint i guess if for no reason other than i can just get around the speed drop by using ice shard and it's putting in enough of an effort as it is oh lovely okay so the paralysis almost screwed me over anyway that could have gone really really far south but it didn't oh she's still got one more screw it bertha kick its ass get up to level 26 bertha's easily going to be the mp mvp for this uh gym so yeah knock her over and i guess it forces the uh flower clock to change its hands jeez could that have taken any longer <laughs> so that's the uh puzzle that's inherent to platinum if you're playing diamond and pearl it has a different puzzle where you go around a uh, maze and try to find somewhat well hidden trainers it's honest it's not like that terrible because the maze isn't really all that convoluted so it's not difficult to find all the other trainers but you will have to knock the vast majority of them out before you can progress to the gym leader uh let's see i guess maybe live with three dollar if for no reason other than to just bait and switch because as evidence from that first encounter i don't expect three dollar to be able to do a whole lot early on here there might be some kind of useful spot that it can take advantage of perhaps this weeping bell it's, it is weak to psychic so we'll give this a shot leech life radio that's got to be a hack exclusive move i don't recall weeping bell ever being able to learn leech life otherwise all right that's a decent amount of damage the only problem however is it's doing like 20 damage with leech life um let's see how much damage it actually heals by using leech life or you can use gastro acid that just means it can't levitate anymore that's fine i'm not that fast as long as it's not uh, healing its damage back with leech life okay i might just get a knock out there sweet okay three dollar managed to prove itself useful uh, I would stay in against the Ivy Saw, though I am a little bit weakened, and it's at level 24 now, so I'd like to get the other team members to catch up. So let's go with an Ice Shot here, see how much damage that does. That could be a 2-hit knockout. It would want to be a 2-hit knockout, or else Spearman's dead. Three, nope. And uses Magical Leaf just to uh, rub it in my face. Okay, fine. $3 cleanup. Found the cleaving, cleaning services were actually worth $3. Life would be just a little bit better. Not that it's really that big of a deal because I don't recall ever having to actually call upon the services of cleaners. Mm hmm. That's cool. Uh, let me just bugger off back and heal. This is probably going to extend the uh, duration I spend in the gym just having to go back and heal every now and again. Because if there's enough time at the end, I might try to bowl in and do the. Uh, at galactic building afterwards i'm not holding my breath though because gardenia could be just a complete asshole um spearmen up front i guess well i mean the even if the character even if my player character is distracted by aromas there's not really much of a mechanic that's going to like affect his capabilities so i guess just the fact that I am not distracted by the aromas means that your statement is technically false. And uh, you just kind of got your ass handed to you right there. Was that a critical? I feel like that was a critical. I don't really rate Spearmint's uh, ability to one-shot opposing Pokemon. Um, I guess stay in for the Bayleaf. It would be a hell of a lot nicer if... 
gyms actually used more starters. Like, like in the vanilla game, Gardenia does have a Turtwig, but that's about all you have to look forward to when it comes to that front. Okay, so we've, uh, our Ice Shard is a bit weaker, so we just have to switch on over to our Icy Wind, because, haha, I have a physical and a special Ice move, so, stuff, so stuff you, I guess. I hate the stuttering in my commentary sometimes. It's just like, it's very easy to come up with some kind of a response and then I just like don't, or just some kind of continuation to my sentence and then I just don't. <laughs> it's like my brain decides to just sort of splutter. It's, it's like a car, it keeps stalling. Never thought I'd ever compare my brain to an old freaking loner car. Like the one from the mask. That thing was so stupid. Bring around the loner. The loner? God. I've not seen that movie in a while. Probably should go back to see it, but it's just... It really is kind of stupid. Like, it's watchable. It's it's certainly far more watchable than Son of the Mask. That thing needs to just freaking die in a fire, but yeah, it's not exactly perfect. Okay, so uh, I believe that's about all we have for the trainers. So now we get to square off against this uh, uppity whatever the hell you want to call it. I guess we'll leave with three dollar. I feel like that's probably not the best idea. In fact, it's not. I'm going to leave with Spearmint. Birth is basically the big backup. Just to clean the fuck up out of every everything if uh, things go south. Uh, probably best to throw a save here. Uh, slot 3 will do the trick. And second attempt fighting Gardenia. Her, uh, she's got a Tangler. And that Tangler just kind of fucked me over with its uh, RNG based bullshit. It... Uh, the plan was basically to have Bertha be the uh, clean up if I if everything else failed. Everything else, for the most part, did fail. Had Bertha to clean up. It uh, got Stun Spore, Ancient Power, Stat Boost off Ancient Power, Paralysis kicked in. So uh, Bertha just kind of got its ass handed to it by that stupid fucking... Fucking... God damn it. So I just lost a good chunk of footage right there. Now I have no idea how long the segment is. So... Unfortunately, Bellossom is actually quite resistant to my ice moves. That's even with the, uh... thing on it. So... This is not going to end very well. I think the plan for this point is to... hopefully get through and just get in a couple of icy wins so that maybe I can send in, uh... Tidal to get the knockout. Unfortunately, she's gone with a different strategy here than what she normally does. She kept spamming a Dazzling Gleam after para paralyzing me, but here she's gone with the full uh, Parafusion strategy. And at this stage, I'm thinking I might want to actually speed up here because all I'm actually going to have to be putting up with is just either not being able to move because of paralysis or not being able to move because I'm too busy hurting myself. Okay, critical. That works just as well. It actually puts me in the exact same position I was before, just in a dip, just just a little bit quicker. Uh, Avalanche. I did made the decision not to go with Avalanche just because I couldn't justify getting rid of any of the moves that are already on Spearmint's move set. So, yeah. Anyhow, uh, Brello. Definitely going into Bertha here. I would like to try to distribute the uh, screen time evenly amongst everybody, but in situations like this, kind of can't really do that. And Breloom is quite weak to flying. There is no way I'm not hitting this thing with an aerial ace. Breloom can be pretty annoying to deal with at times. It can just kind of fuck your shit up. So get that thing out of the way, and we don't have to worry about it. And there's another level up. Baton pass. Uh, hell no. Okay. So yeah, here's the Tangler. This thing is 
really kind of annoying to deal with. I don't know if it has a grass. No, I don't. It has grass knot. Duh. What's the move? What is the move set? Ancient power, grass knot, shock wave for some stupid reason, and um, stun spore. I think. Yeah, I think it's stun spore. So it's annoying. It's uh, got a quite a bit more coverage than I would have expected. So yeah, there's the stun spore. I'm hoping to get past this paralysis and put the thing to sleep. Okay, so there's the there's the sleep. Now I would like to go into Bertha here. I've got a free turn here. And then I can um having a I can take advantage of the lessons I've learned here. I do not want to use Aerial Lace because it is holding a Cobra Berry. So instead I want to use Bug Bite. So that even if it uh, does not live, Bug Bite eats the Cobra Berry, so it's rendered completely useless anyway. And the Tangler remains asleep. Oh, yep, there we go. There's uh, there's the Super Potion. Not going to do enough, though, just because Bug Bite almost knocked it out anyway. I'm calling him damage on that, by the way. I reckon that probably should have knocked out, but whatever. That was the uh, ideal strategy, and the Tangler is now rendered completely and utterly moot. Chereem. As far as I'm aware, Chereem is pretty much useless unless it is in the sun. So, I've got two par paralyzed Pokemon here. Am I just going to end up cleaning house with Bertha here? I think that's probably what's going to happen. Rampart is almost completely useless in this situation. I'm going to go into Tidal, and I'm going to see what this uh, thing wants to do. I am hoping that it goes for a sunny day so I can at least get one Aurora Beam in. It's probably going to just smash me with a Magical Leaf or something and knock me out in one hit. Okay, there's the sunny day. That uh, transforms it into that uh, happy-go-lucky bundle of whatever the hell you want to call it. And Aurora Beam did jack shit. I was hoping to at least be within range of a two-hit knockout. That's like a four-hit knockout. So I might have been better off going with a Dragon Breath and hoping for a Paralysis there. Because it's just going to bowl in here with a Grass Knot. It's probably going to knock out anyway. Oh, no, it didn't. Because the only benefit I get out of Aurora Beam is a potential attack drop. Which is not going to matter at all because Grass Knot's a, um, a special move. Okay, um, yeah, I'd like Tidal to get some experience out of this, so switch out, go into Bertha. Oh boy, fucking weather ball. In the sun, that makes it a fire move. Holy shit. Okay, Aerial Ace. It outspeeds? Oh shit. You mean to tell me that I've just kind of lost again? Fuck. I don't have any revives on me either, so... Bertha, Bertha is not coming back. Wait, do I? Hang on. Oh shit, I actually do. Damn it. This is the second gym and I'm already resorting to revives. Okay. Shereem's back to its uh, base form here. Do I go with the Gyro Ball? I guess I'll give it a crack. Maybe Paralysis will have an effect on the Gyro Ball's power. I don't think that's how that works, but I don't know. I'm just... I guess I'm clasping at straws. Grasping at straws. Whatever the hell that saying is. What does this do? Oh, jeez. That's almost knockout, although she's probably going to heal it. No. Woke up going for the Grass Knot. Okay. Paralysis, don't be an asshole. I said paralysis, don't be an asshole. Oh my god, really? It has like one HP left. Just kill it. I can tank this with one HP. Tank with one HP. Oh my god. Three turns in a row? Are you shitting me? I have to blow a super potion on this. 
Okay, weather ball's normal when there's no weather pattern up. Um, okay, can we maybe, you know, keep going? Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. That is when it is at its most annoying, when Paralysis just decides to kick in like three or four times in a row when the opposition has like one HP left and will die to like a damp breeze. Ugh. Not, not even going to bother with Iron Defense. Its next move is at 27, which I believe is Zen Headbutt. That'll be a good move to have, but until then, uh, hell no. We'll be sticking with this move set. Rose Ray, that's her ace. Um, hmm. Rose Ray will probably outspeed. So I may need to be using a handful of death fodder here. Gonna start with Spearmint in the hopes that I can get an ice shard off to at least weaken it a little bit. Okay, so there's the ice shard. I may have to send in something else to take a hit while I fully heal Bertha. Oh, that actually did a fair bit more than I was expecting. Okay, so there's the Magical Leaf. It ain't gonna do shit with Magical Leaf. Not with uh, my special defense as it is. Um, okay, Tidal will have to go in as the second bit of Death Fodder. I need to heal up Bertha. Okay, there's Dazzling Gleam. So what's the move? So Dazzling Gleam, Magical Leaf. Probably some kind of a status move to deal with stuff like Bertha. If this thing somehow has like a rock move, I'm going to be salt. Uh, only super effective move I can hit it with is Aerial Ace because it's part poison. So there's Sludge. It's not Sludge Bomb, so it's not like absolutely terrible. It's still a poison chance though. Gone. Right. And I think Bertha's just going to be cleaning out her uh, last Pokemon as well. And then Bertha's probably not going to get a whole lot of, bunch of screen time for quite a while just because she's out leveling everything else by a significant amount now. Okay, Grottle. I think we just stay in and clean house. Stay in and clean house. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it might be. Probably should have taken the opportunity to set up a reflect or something like that, but no. Bug Bite gets the one shot. That'll do that. That, uh... If I'd known I had the, rep the revives, I might have been able to do it on my first go, but regardless, it still probably would have ended up about the same as this attempt did. Which was just... I mean, this is the second gem. I really shouldn't be having to resort to crap like revives at this point in the game. Ugh. And that's a completely useless TM by the way. I'm never putting grass on anything at all. I think the only time I've actually had it on a team member like permanently was the Pikachu I used in Blaze Black. Which, I mean, it worked out relatively well, just because there were a lot of heavy Pokemon towards the end of the game, but besides that, it wasn't all that great. Okay. I have about 30 minutes of recording time here. I'm not too sure how much of that is being removed from that uh, failed attempt, so that's probably about... I'd say it might be about a 25-26 minute video. So I think that's going to do that. I think that's going to be about it. Let me see if there's any, like, cutscenes I need to trigger here before I conclude the segment. Ah, right. So you just talk to this dude. It's just like, you have the forest badge. That means your Pokemon are good. Uh, thanks. I'll be having them now. Just, sure. That's totally what, uh, that's totally how that works. This guy's smart. He's using a Ledian. It would be dumb in any other game, but this one, it's actually pretty good. And critical one-shot. Very, very good. Yeah. They had to they had to counterbalance all of the uh, great pluses that they gave to Bertha by just 
you know, having one little feature where it's just like, yeah, it's not quite as good. Ariados can get its ass handed to it by Rampart. Rampart needs some screen time and hasn't had any in this segment. If at all. Oh boy, Swords Dance. Unless this freaking thing bowls in with like some kind of a revenge or whatever, I don't expect that to be very relevant to its capabilities of knocking Rampart out. Maybe I outspeed here. No, I didn't think so. Oh boy, that's quite a lot of uh, damage. Aren't you supposed to resist? I could have sworn you were supposed to resist. Beats me. Okay, uh, do you outspeed? You probably did, but Shadow Sneak says no. So uh, I guess, I guess Rampart just gets to uh, chill out around Route 211 or somewhere and uh, grind up to catch up with the rest of the team because the fact that it couldn't knock out an Ariados is just fucking embarrassing. That's really, really, that's, that, that's pathetic. Now, I don't think I need to grind it up too much. I'll probably just have it lead for the majority of this, uh, for this quest into the building, which I'm going to be doing next time because I think I've already got a long enough segment as it is. So I'll be taking care of that next time. Probably going to bowl around in the old chateau as well because uh, I've, I've taken the, I, I've made the decision not to go in there quite yet until I've uh, done everything in here. Because anybody who's played Platinum before will know that there is something quite relevant to. I don't, I don't know what really, but there is something of interest in there that uh, I want to show off, and I can't do that quite yet until I've knocked everybody else over and then gone through the old chateau after that and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to do it in that order. Building first, then Chateau, and then probably grab the last team member after that. So, yeah, I will see you next time.